What's up out there? Welcome to the channel and welcome to my first official movie review video. And today we're going to look at Terrifier 2. This is a movie that just came out not too long ago. It's directed by Damien Leone. It is kind of one of my, well, it is the most anticipated film that I've wanted to see this year. And that includes stuff like Barbarian, Smile, Nope. Uh, I've really wanted to see all those, but this is the one that I really wanted to see the most. So to preface all this, um, this I watched the first movie back in 2018, and I watched this during the Halloween Horror Movie Marathon of that year, and then I watched it again in 2019, looks like just before October, so I watched it in 2018, and I gave it three stars, and I said, yeah, it's kind of a B-rated movie. You got to remember, when you're in the middle of a movie marathon, you're watching a lot of movies at once, and you're trying to get it all taken in, and you may like one. Uh, but you don't necessarily get a chance to absorb it before you're watching the next one. You know, you watch a movie, do a review, watch the next one, do a review. So you don't really get a chance to digest it. And that's why I sat down the next year and watched the first one again. And my score went up to three and a half out of five stars. Um, I really like that movie a lot. It's actually one of my all time favorite movies. So this part two was definitely anticipated. Um, there are faults with the original one for sure. I mean, it's not a perfect movie in any way, shape or form, and it's not anything I would even come close to a four or five stars, maybe four, if I was being generous. Um, it is what it is. It is a, a very violent horror movie and there's not a whole lot of story there, which is fine. I think that's perfect. That is, that movie was what it needed to be. And I loved it for it. So in relation, this movie is a little bit different than that one. It's kind of the same, but different. And I would compare these two to Gears of War 1 and Gears of War 2. If you're old enough to have played those, the first game came out. It was a phenomenal game. It was fun. It was my favorite of the series. And it had very, barely any story to it. You were just going around shooting things. It was all action, all having fun, watching you know things die. That was it. And then the second one comes out and they try putting a story into it. it. It was good, but it wasn't as good as the first one. So that's how I would compare these two. Uh, Terrifier 2 stars Lauren Lavera as the main character, and she did a phenomenal job. I couldn't quite figure out if she was supposed to be in high school or college. Like she looks like the, it felt like they were trying to say she was in high school, but she looks more college age. So it was kind of weird. I, I didn't get that one. And we get David Hall David Howard Thornton back as Art the Clown. Now, this guy does a phenomenal job as a miming clown. I, I love the way he plays this character. I love the, the facial expressions he has. I love the way he'll be stabbing somebody and then he'll stop and he'll be like, you know, like, hey, look at my work. Isn't that great? And or he'll do the, the whole crying thing as somebody's screaming after he's beaten him for a while. Uh, it's very visceral and sickening comedy, but that's what you're signing up for when you watch one of these movies, basically. Now, the first movie, what I really loved about the first movie and the reason it's on my top 10 all-time favorite list is because of the unexpected things that happen. It's not just because it's gory. I mean, it's, it's super over the top gory. It's funny and it's funny in all the wrong ways. Like you're not supposed to laugh at stuff, but things are so horrendous. You just can't help but laugh. And some of the characters that die, some of the things that happen that you see in that movie are just unexpected. Like you would think this is going to be the one that lives and they don't and things change. And, and like, there's some huge um, shifts in the movie and it, it just, I love that. I love how that was unexpected. At every turn, it was not your normal story. Uh, things happen that you just don't think are going to happen. Now, contrast that with Terrifier 2. Part 2 is dials up the gore. Well, I don't want to say it dials up the gore. Like, it's still that gory. I don't know that you can dial it up too much further. It's pretty well there. It's just that it's longer. And that was one of the things that I was really concerned with. This is almost a two-hour, well, this is two and a half hour, almost two and a half hour movie. It's like two hours and 18 minutes or something like that. And... It's long and I, you know, you're going to go see that at the theater and sit in some cramped up seat for two and a half hours. That didn't really seem appealing to me. I was hoping it would get to our recliner place, but it didn't. And, or I didn't have time if it did. I don't know. It, it was always over at the one on the other side of town that's really uncomfortable. And sitting there for two hours and 18 minutes was not something I wanted to do. 
But I got to watch it at home on Screenbox. Uh, I had to go through Amazon to get it onto my NVIDIA Shield TV because the Chromecast thing wasn't working. It was kind of a fiasco. But I eventually got it working, and I got to watch this on Halloween night. So it was like the perfect movie for the perfect ending for uh, this year's Halloween movie marathon, even though I'd already kind of finished the marathon off and I was just watching extra horror movies along the way. But this movie, it was long, but you know what? It really didn't feel like that two and a half hour runtime. It was a breezy two and a half hours. And there was a lot of things you could cut out of it. There was a lot of probably extraneous scenes, but you get a lot of character building and a lot of depth in there. And this, I have no idea how they did this, but this movie was only a quarter of a million dollar budget. That's it. And it's already made like almost $8 million. So it's insanely profitable. And is I am shocked at how cheap this is because of all the gore and things that they, all the effects that they do. I don't know how they got it that cheap. And with the cast that they do, I mean, this is a pretty big cast. Uh, it seems like it's a far bigger movie than the original was. And this movie really punches above its weight. But I don't think it's any better than the first one. I think the first one delivered more of what I was interested in on that. This is a good movie. But as I was watching this last night, I'm like, this is really cool. But I don't know that I would revisit it. Now, I'm going to, obviously, because there's a part three coming out. So at some point, I'm going to watch uh, one, two, and then eventually three. But I don't know. This one... <laughs> I don't know. It just didn't have that uh, wow factor that the original did. And it's not because it's not original or anything. It just didn't do anything unexpected. So like you kind of know where everything's going to land pretty much. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's safe as gory and violent and over the top as this movie is. It was played safe. And I think the first one was not as safe as this one is. Does that make it bad? No. In fact, I gave this one three and a half out of five stars. I think this is on par with the original as far as uh, the way it's filmed. There was a lot of nice camera angles. There was a lot of, uh, um, like, it what didn't feel janky. It, this does not feel like a $250,000 movie. This feels like a really well-made movie um, that was probably made for $8 million, you know, and it, it feels like it's it was made for a lot more money. So... And one of the things that I really dug was the cast in this. Uh, Lauren Lavera, I think it's Elliot Fulham as the as her brother, little younger brother, and I'm guessing it's this Sarah Void. I, I it, maybe getting the cast wrong, but I think Sarah Void played the mother. I think those three had a really good family dynamic going. Like the kids were not bad kids in any way, shape, or form, but they. Stupid things happened and the mother would kind of un go off on him. And it was things that Art was doing in the background, you know, that kind of getting them in trouble and all that. Um, but the mother did a phenomenal job. The woman that played the mother did a phenomenal job being like, I remember my mom yelling at me for doing things when I was a kid. You know what I mean? She'd get pissed off when I well, didn't mean to do that. <laughs> didn't mean to bring that one out. Um, so I really enjoyed the family dynamic they had going. Like it was a believable family and you have art coming along and pushing buttons and doing things and creating all kinds of havoc. And, um, somehow they're tied to him in some fashion. We don't quite know yet. And that's not spoilers because there's just nothing in this movie. It alludes to certain things, but it doesn't really come out and say anything. And I assume we're going to find that out in part three. Um, but, the movie was good overall. I really enjoyed this. I had a fun time watching it and I don't really have any complaints. It, it didn't meet the expectations that I had, but it wasn't disappointing. If that makes sense. Like I didn't hate it. This movie is fine. Uh, more than adequate. And I will probably rate that. I might enjoy this more on a second viewing, quite honestly, because that's how the first one went. I was kind of, eh, it was all right, but I wanted to revisit it. This one, I don't know that I want to revisit, though. For one, it's very long. And for two, it really didn't have, like I said, that wow factor to me. But I don't know. I did enjoy this enough that I would be looking forward to part three. And then I would revisit this to watch part three. So that is basically my thoughts on this. Would I recommend this to anybody? Uh, if you're into gory movies or you want to take your girlfriend out to watch something that's, uh, pretty violent, 
and see her squirm, yeah, I would recommend it. If you do not like squeamish things or super over the top violence, I would not recommend this. Uh, it is it is what it is. And if you're a fan of this kind of movie, you will like it. If you're not, you're not going to like it. So anyway, three and a half out of five stars. I dug this and I can't wait for the third one to come out. So anyway, that will do it for this video. We will catch you on the next one. Take care.